all, and welcome back to another season and episode of the Game Time CT Pick'em's Podcast. I'm your host, Pete Paguaga, here with Sean Patrick Boley and the 8-Ball for another season. Sean, welcome back. Football season! All right! Forget the meat grinder because this is the one everyone cares about. This is the only one I ever hear anybody about, talk about. So uh, this is the, the podcast, the law podcast. Let's go. Let's start making picks. This is why we're here, right? To prove us wrong, to make us look foolish on this on this, uh, on this, this podcast in front of everybody in the state. So, Pete, I'm once again ready to go. Last year, not so bad, but uh, still haven't won this thing yet. Yeah, I was going to say, neither you nor I have won this since we kind of started doing the Game Time CT iteration of this. Shout out to Will Aldum. He won the picks last year, came back all the way. Terrible start to the season, but beat Dave Stewart by one win. Uh, one game separated Dave Stewart from becoming a back-to-back champion, but Will Aldum takes his first championship home. Uh, the eight ball came in last place. Sean, you finished in the middle of the pack, six yeah. games back. I finished underneath you, seven games back. Yeah. Um, I think this is the year, though. I, I We say it every year, but this is the year we're going to stop picking with our hearts. We're going to stop picking for entertainment. We are going to pick to win this year. At least that's what I'm telling myself right now. Well, yeah, until you start getting behind like four or five games after week three. <laughs> You're like, oh, man. Uh, West David, uh, yeah, you got to pick. start start picking upsets. You're like, uh, Guilford over hand Sure, sure. I, I, that, that'll be uh, So, But I'm anxious to get started. Yeah, it's another season, so uh, I'm fired up. This is a heavy alliance week, though. Uh, so like most weeks in a non-alliance week, we're going to have representation from every conference, but there are just so many good games. So of the 10 games we're picking this week, nine of them are alliance games. The first one is not and is being played on Friday night. Holy Cross at Woodland. We were at this game last year. Woodland at Holy Cross at Municipal. It was delayed uh, in the middle of the game because of heat lightning. Um, you got Holy Cross coming in. They were 8-4 and four last year, won a playoff game in Class M, lost to Rockville by one in the semifinals. They've been moved up to double M. They got a lot of guys back. They're missing some you know, top players who graduated a year ago, like our guy uh, Campbell. Um, but Drew Collette is back under center. I believe this is his third year starting. Yeah. And Deshaun Graves, the sophomore, as a freshman, he caught three touchdowns. In Holy Cross's overtime win against Woodland in the opener, uh, only a sophomore uh, going up against Woodland and Joe Lado. Uh, the Hawks went five and five last year. Christian Morales is back, leading the way as the running back, uh, and a lot of guys. Brett Lado back, Joe's son uh, for his senior year. So a nice NVL matchup to start the season. Sean, who do you like in this one? Yeah, a really good NVL match. It was a great game last year. Remember, it was, uh, and then it's been a great game the last few years, if I remember uh, correctly. Maybe not. Uh, but uh, this is always uh, these two teams that are always kind of in the thick of things. Uh, I am going to go. I mean, listen, Woodland coming off a five and five season, obviously wants to turn things around. Holy Cross kind of feels like they might have been a little snake bit in that semifinal, but it, as it turns out, it was going to be for the right to lose a hand by 800 points. So maybe they're not so 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 uh, uh, so uh, displeased about that. And Class Double M, right? Are, are yeah, uh, yeah. In Class Double M now, now they got to contend with a few other heavyweights, though. So we shall see. But nice start to the season. I'm gonna go here, Pete, with Holy Cross. I just think how it's good, great at quarterback, and they got all, they got some some weapons there. Even though not having Campbell really kind of hurts. Don't be surprised to see Woodland uh, put up a fight, especially on their home field. One of the bl- great places to watch a football game. But I'm gonna go with the Crusaders. Yeah, I, I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to go with Holy Cross as well. I think we like Drew Collette as a quarterback. He he's We've seen him a lot over the last couple of years, and he can make some really good plays. Uh, I think we both expect a big step forward for Deshaun Graves. They got a sophomore running back, too, Nathan Kraft, who Coach uh, GM Petruzzi is excited about. All right, on to the next one. We have Southington going on the road to Rafferty Stadium to play Fairfield Prep. This Southington team, a whole bunch of new faces. 
all over the place new faces, including at coach Rob Levesque takes over for his first season at Southington. He had been with the Blue Knights as a uh, assistant defensive coordinator under Mike Drury, who stepped down after, um, I think, what, 11 years uh, leading Southington with a lot of great success, including two state, two state championships, including the one where they beat Fairfield Prep. Southington coming off a 7-5 to five season, a lot of new faces. The Benedettos graduated. Anderson's graduated. Williams has graduated. A lot of talented players are gone, but they got guys back. If you listen to the meat grinder, you know where I stand on Fairfield Prep. You know where Sean stands on Fairfield Prep. Yeah, they were 4-6 and six last year. They were one inch away from going to the state finals. If they would have beaten Staples, they would have won the semifinals, and they would have went and played West Haven in the championship. That's how talented they are. Their defense is so good this year. Mason Frey going to Navy. TJ Shirelli with a lot of Division One offers. That defense is always so good for Prep. On the other side, the offense, this is where we're going to see if how good Fairfield Prep can be. Robbie Manning under center, the junior quarterback, takes over. He's got two great receivers, and my guy, Finn Barmaloy, and uh, Kyron Robinson, who's really good, had a really good start to last season. But they went 4-6. and six. They got into the playoffs and lost. This is a team that I think can win a state championship. Uh, I'm going to go first on this one, and then I'll let you go. Sean, I'm going to take Fairfield Prep here. Okay, I, They are my pick to win Class Double L. And they're a top three team in my poll. And uh, I truly do think they're one of the best teams in the state. Sean, who do you got? Pete, the knock on uh, Fairfield Prep every year is that, you know, they step off the bus and you're like, holy Christmas, what is going on here? This, these guys are going to run us down. And then you get on the field and then you punch them in the face and they don't respond. You know, we saw that a lot of times uh, over the years. They did not respond, especially offensively uh, last year. That has to be corrected. That said, I really do think this Fairfield Prep team is stacked. You know, they realize how good they were after almost knocking off the eventual champ Staples in, the, in that great quarterfinal. Was it quarterfinal or semifinal? Quarterfinal game. Quarterfinal game. Another great quarterfinal game. They know they have the talent to get this thing done. Uh, and it would be a supreme disappointment. I know Prep had a really rough season sports-wise last year, which was salvage, thank goodness. For uh, for the uh, by the lacrosse team winning the state championship, Grand Nimi said he felt a lot of pressure. Now it goes on to the football team. All right, guys, new year, new new start. What do you got? The whole school is behind you. You know, don't disappoint. Don't let us down. I don't think they will. I think they're they're prime. They're ready to go. Southington, like you said, whole new cast of characters. Uh, they'll be competitive because Rob does a great job. He's a great coach. But I think this is Fairfield Preps. Yeah, new year, new me. All right, uh, heading over, staying in, sorry. Well, we're heading to West Haven, but we're staying in the SEC for this home team. But it's Greenwich making the trip up to Ken Strong Stadium. This is a rematch of the double L semifinals that was in Greenwich last year. West Haven won by 13, 26 to 13. Now, a lot of new faces across the board. Greenwich, a perennial power in double L, a perennial top team in this state, returns just two starters on offense and two starters on defense. And two of those four are our guy, two-time first-team All-State selection, Pete Von Valakis, who starts at center and on DT for the Cardinals. He is a Navy commit. He is a great player, but they are going to be so green. A lot of inexperience across the field, but they are Greenwich. And then on the other side, we got West Haven. West Haven, who went into Greenwich, knocked off the Cardinals, went to the state finals, and lost by inches, 21-20 to against Staples. Nick Conlin is back. He was an All-State quarterback last year for us. A lot of talent on the line on both offense and defense. For me, the biggest concern for West Haven is the skill players. Um, but I will hold to my turn, Sean. I will let you go first on this one. You've seen West Haven, yes. So let's uh, so let's fill in the let's fill in the listeners with some in depth scrimmage in-depth. knowledge. Yeah, absolutely. I saw them scrimmage Maloney uh, up at uh, Falcon Field right at the end of last week, uh, week zero, I guess you want to call it the the scrim the great scrimmage week that we always uh, we play in Connecticut. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I got there and it was kind of a back and forth game. Nick Conlon looked good. Their new lineman, Kadir, looked good. He confused me with you, but, you know. <laughs> great, great kid. New new favorite. He's a new favorite of mine. He's, yeah, well, yeah. yeah confu- Everyone confuses 
you with me or vice versa. They always say Pete beats me. And I'm like, guys, guys, you're, you're not helping here, man. I mean, you're, you're really here. I'm not correct. 12, 15 more years in Pete and everyone's calling me Pete. I'm both, you know, Gridiron Club Hall of Famer, by the way, going in. This, uh, thank you very much, uh, everybody at the Maven Gridiron Club. I'm going in this, but I, don't confuse me with Pete, please. I mean, I've heard that. You know, you don't have to like everything I like have to say, but oh man. Anyway, okay. <laughs> that said, this is a really tough game. I did see West Haven against Maloney, and you know, I went up to uh, uh, Conlin. I said, "Listen, the, the knock on you guys is, you know, where are the skill guys." He says, "We got them." But let me tell you, Pete. After a few plays they made, there are a lot of drop balls by the receivers, and that can't have Nick and the guys really happy. And they can walk out of there, guys. Catch some balls. Uh, otherwise, it's gonna be a long season. And uh, cause, yeah, they were right on the money a lot of those throws, and they kind of got eaten up on defense by Jesus Martell of um, of Maloney. So already some some cracks, some weaknesses uh, uh, for the uh, the runners up in Class Double L. That said, Greenwich also very green, like you mentioned. I think this is going to be a really tough game at uh, Ken Strong Stadium. I don't know. I mean, the last time Greenwich was here, I don't think uh, it went too well for him. But I, now this is a whole another thing. Um, but I'll just make the pick right now. I'm going to go with West Haven. But it's a very, very iffy pick. West Haven, show me what you got. I mean, Greenwich is right for the plucking. Let's see it, guys. But uh, right now, I'm a little iffy on it. But I'm going to go with West Haven. I picked them to win the state championship on the meat grinder before I saw him. So take that for what it's worth. <laughs> don't let me down, guys. <laughs> Not let me down, please, please. I, I I will say this about Greenwich: in the years where they come through with new talent, they always seem ready to go. And uh, I don't know what to expect out of Greenwich this year. The thing about West Haven, I saw West Haven so much last year. I I'm pretty confident I was at like ten of their thirteen games. Uh, at one uh, something like that, and um, the thing they were so good at the big play. I mean, the the skill players were amazing. Reed, Co, Kemp. I mean, they just had Conlin. Even Conlin could tuck the ball and run it seventy yards. Um, coming out of that scrimmage, you mentioned the skill players, and and those guys need to step up. And look, Greenwich had a really good shot in that semifinal game, and then Armani Reed hit him with a seventy yard touchdown, and West Haven kind of took off. And uh, I just don't see those guys yet for West Haven. So I'm going to go with Greenwich. I think the Greenwich kids are have been waiting their time. And uh, I think I think it's going to be a great game. Don't get me wrong. And I'm sure Tom Unger is sitting there clapping, being like, yes, he He's picked against us. Over, He's already clapping. <laughs> I, I had to say. Go ahead. <laughs> He's like, oh, thank God Pete picked against us. But I'm going to go with Greenwich here. Uh, it's the first time that we have separated through our three games. But I think we both agree that this is going to be a great game either way. Um, so let's make it a little fun then. So we don't agree. All right. On to the next one. This one is a great game. This is the game I will be at this week. Uh, new Canaan, the number one preseason new Canaan Rams on the road to Falcon field where they will play the Maloney Spartans. Uh, these teams have met the last two years. New Canaan beat them in the state championship and then beat them in the state semifinals last year. And uh, that state semifinal lost 11-8 to eight on a last-second walk-off field goal by Tucker Stevens. I mean, Maloney cannot figure out how to beat New Canaan, but let's talk about the number one Rams first, right? Luke Robinson is back under center. He grew so much last year from the beginning of the year to, I mean, uh, you were there. You and I were both there at St. Joe's in the pouring rain where he threw for like four touchdowns. He became better as the year went on, and here he is as a senior under center. He is going to be the guy. We mentioned Tucker Stevens. Having a kicker who can dominate uh, and win you games is great. It is going to be the defense for New Canaan. They've really led the way in the post-Drew Pine era at New Canaan. So there's a lot of guys on this line that can step up. Connor Mazza in, at cornerback is really a player to keep an eye on for New Canaan. He's, and him and Michael Smith at safety are going to have their hands full with the Spartans playmakers led by Jesus Martel and Donald Highsmith and my guy that no one is talking about, quarterback Ethan Nadinsky, who is basically in his second and a half year starting for the Spartans. This game is going to be up at Falcon Field. Maloney's got seven returning starters. It's the home of the steamed cheeseburger. And then maybe you get him on the way home because New Canaan is going to win this game. 
and they're going to have a nice long bus ride back to New Canaan with celebratory steam cheeseburgers. I'm going with the Rams because every time I pick Maloney, I lose. Pete, the book on New Canaan the last two years is the, they kind of willed themselves to the, the last two state championships. Those teams had no business winning them, right? But just through some some good coaching, some clutch plays by their players, and the next thing you know, you're a two-time state defending champion, especially over Maloney, who's just saying can't seem to get over that hump. They beat Darian a few years ago, and it was like it was like they won the Super Bowl, and they still can't get New Canaan, which is the gold standard right now in the FCAC. Now New Canaan's coming to Falcon Field, and let me tell you, I think Maloney is very good. And like I said before, they played when they scrimmaged West Haven. Uh, Jesus Martell was unstoppable. I think he scored three of the uh, of the four touchdowns, and Highsmith had the other. Uh, on a short run. He is also looking really good at linebacker. And then of course, like you said about New Canaan, you know, they, they got a lot of good players, a lot of good, a lot of good players who just always seem to be in the right places. You have a hard time out coaching Lou Marinelli. And uh, it's just, uh, you know, just, just one of those things that they have to get on the home at least once. Right. Well, I say, finally, they do it right here. I'm going to go for it, Pete Maloney over New Canaan, New Canaan, the number one team in the state. I'm picking Darian. I don't know what the rest of our voters are smoking. I'm going with Darian in this one. I think New Canaan's going to be great. I, I've, I've heard this is a, this team has a, has is much better than the last two. But remember, I don't who, who's the game breaker. Who's the big guy who you're going to turn to and make a great play? I don't know if he's there yet. He might be. He might show up in this game. But right now, if it comes down to it, someone needs to make a play. I'm going to go with Highsmith or Jesus Martell for the Spartans. I'm going with Maloney, Pete. Wow. Well, I mean, I'm not shocked because, you know, I, I feel like a lot of people would pick Maloney in this game because of the experience. But I, usually it's me that's pumping Maloney and yeah. getting myself into trouble, you know. Um, but now I'm picking I'm picking New Canaan and you're picking Maloney. That's right. How Mark the timetables have turned. Do not let like me that. down, Jesus Martell. <laughs> well, Don't I think either way. It's going to be a great game on Friday night at Falcon. Like I said, though, go get your steamed cheeseburgers. I, you all know I will. All right. Staying. Uh, staying. We got next one up. We got Berlin at Branford. These teams met in the state playoffs two years ago in the quarterfinals when Branford got into the playoffs at 5-5, five and five, and Branford hung with them for the first half. Okay. New faces on those fields. That was a, that was the Berlin team that went to the finals and lost to Notre Dame. West Haven. Berlin making the trip down. Kyle Melville. I think he is a player that you and I both really like. He's on the cover of the 50 players to watch list. Right. Uh, but Berlin's got Kyle back. Ryan Lavender. Those names should sound familiar. They have contributed over the last couple of years for Berlin. Berlin did make the playoffs last year. Bradford. Is just John Lamone gets them in comp in contention every year. They went seven and three last year and did not make the playoffs. They went five and five the year before and did make the playoffs. But they are always in there and leading the way. Akil Lamodi. If I'm wrong, John, please text me. But the running back committed to Harvard. He stepped in last year after an injury and just took off for the Hornets, taking over that running back room, and he is the guy. He ran for 963 yards last year, and he is a talented back. Big season coming from him in this game. Sean, Berlin's making the trip down, as opposed to when Brantford went up to Sage Park. Who do you like in this one? I liked uh, Berlin last year. Uh, they had a pretty good team. Uh, lots of good players, like you said. Melva is really a, 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 a just a talent. He's been there since his what his freshman year. It feels like um, playing uh, at starring for the Redcoats. A few other guys there, and Rick Kelly at quarterback. Um, you know, they did lose some guys, but I, I think they're going to be really good. I mean, Branford, you know, like you said, they have Lamoti, and uh, he's going to be the guy that they're going to have to key on. That's a tough spot. I I really don't like picking against the uh, the SEC team home and in, in these games. And the CCC team always CCC always does terrible in these alliance games. And because of that, I'm gonna go with the Hornets. I know John's gonna hate me for this, and I think Berlin's gonna be right in the thick of things. They're gonna be a playoff team this year, but I don't know. I just feel like you know SEC 
uh, is just better than the CCC when it comes when it's pound for pound uh, teams going against each other. And I don't think this uh, matchup will be any different. I too am going to go with Brantford. Um, I think Berlin is a really good team and a really great program. And I think Kyle Melville is going to have a great year. Um, but if we're going to go with the opener, you know, no other, you know, some game scrimmage experience, whatever, I'm going to take Brantford in this one. I agree with you about the SEC and pound for pound. All right, we are going to move down to the FCAC. Well, FCAC home team. We got Cheshire going on the road to play Darien. Now, Cheshire, 8-3 and three last year. They went to the quarterfinals. A lot's gone. You know, Matt Jeffrey's gone, one of the better players that we've had, you know, that we've covered over the years. Uh, but there was a lot of talent on that Cheshire team as well, outside of Matt, and a lot of them have graduated. One of them is back is the quarterback, Anston Marsh, quarterback. He has seen time a lot over the years because of injuries, and he has always filled in so well. Again, he got to the playoffs last year, and they lose probably one of the best players in their program for the last X amount of years, and they are privileged to go on the road to play Darian, who you and I, again, if you're listening to this show, you must have listened to the meat grinder. And if not, listen to the meat grinder. Okay? But you know that Sean and I think Darian's the best team in the state. They're our number one team. We voted for him. And now Cheshire gets to go down there. They get to go play Kevin Roach, Charlie Tom, Jackson Davenport, Ben Roloff, Will Barber, Ryan Gately. I mean, <laughs> good luck trying to get to Ben Roloff. Jackson Davenport's in your way. Dude, he is six foot six, two hundred and seventy five pounds and going to Buffalo. We met him last week. Holy crud, he's a big boy. And then you got Tom and Roach. You know, Tom's going to miss some time at the beginning of the year, but Kevin Roach is six foot nine. No, and roll up. Great. I think the world of Ben Roll up. I think he is going to be an amazing. He might be the best quarterback in the state this year. And then on D with Barber and Gately jamming up the middle. Like, good luck. And I want to give a shout out to this kid, Ben Curtis, the linebacker. Um, he's a big kid. He's not as big as Tom Roach or Davenport when we met him last week, but he's a big kid, and he's a very good linebacker. Um, I mean, I'm going first on this one. I'm going to make it easy, and this is nothing against Cheshire. I think they're a fine team. They're going to have a fine season. But Darian's the best team in the state, and I'm picking them because they're the best team in the state. Sean, what do you, who do you like? Uh, yeah, I'm going to go with Darian here. I picked them to be my number one team. Matt Treffy doesn't play for uh, Cheshire anymore. Cheshire has had, and there's a whole ton of other guys that Cheshire lost. Uh, it's a no-brainer for me. I'm going to go with Darian, especially at home. Yeah. Agreed. All right. Up to North Haven. Dun, da, da, da. The St. Joe's Hogs on the road to North Haven. St. Joe's went to the playoffs last year at 6-4 and four and met Daniel Hand, who they lost to because Hand won the championship. They always seem to meet Hand in the playoffs. But they will open with Hand's SEC rival, who North Haven is not playing this year, or who Hand is not playing this year, in North Haven. St. Joe's, a lot of familiar faces back. Jason Pagano, TJ Wright, Jesse Cavino, and sophomore quarterback H.T. Jones. Now, Connor Fahey, who started as a sophomore, um, missed last year with an injury, is out for the season again Oof. this year. And they're going to North Haven, the two-time class double M champions. They will not be defending their title because they are down in M. A lot of familiar faces back, but not the big guys. No Adam Pandolfi, uh, but Joe Mastriani, Tyler DeMauro, Mike and Brian Moran are all back for the Nighthawks. That offense is just so... it. Yes, does it matter who's there? Yes, but it really is plug and play. And these guys have been playing this offense for such a long time. Um, I went first last time, so I'm going to pass it over to you. Sean, who do you got, St. Joe's or North Haven? Pete, when it comes to St. Joe, remember this name, Lameek Black. Receiver, 5'11", junior, transfer from Fairfield Prep. Uh, I think he's going to really help the Hogs this year. And then you, you have all the other guys coming back, like H. Jones. Uh, and I saw them in a scrimmage, and they look pretty tough. They look like the best the team of their own scrimmage, St. Joe. Uh you know, I think that they are ready to get back into the swing of things. They're going to contend for a title. This is the first team, Pete, that St. Joe that has not won any kind of title for Coach Joe Del Vecchio. The last team that won a title was obviously 2019 when they were number one in the state. And since then, it's been kind of a slow climb back for a variety of reasons. 
But uh, you know, finally, I think. Joe Dell thinks that this team might have a, have what it takes to make a run. Listen, granted, it's a really young team. They do have playmakers up top. I love the defense. They look tough. Uh, I'm going to go with St. Joe here. I know, North Haven. I know. I'm your arch enemy. All you guys do is want me to pick against you. Well, here you go again. Starting the season, St. Joe over North Haven. I saw North Haven against Antonio granted, two weeks ago in a scrimmage. And the, the book on them then was like, it'll be a good team again, but... They're gonna take it's gonna take a little time. I think St. Joe gets in and out of there. It's gonna be tough because they gotta get North Haven off the field. So I'm gonna go with St. Joe. Yeah, I'm gonna go with St. Joe too. And the reason is I'd like all the experience back for the Hogs, and I think that's gonna be really important in a week one matchup against North Haven. If you listen to the meat grinder, I picked North Haven to win the class M title. Because I think once you can get going in that offense, it's really hard to stop. But I think that there's a lot of inexperience on the North Haven side, which will play to St. Joe's advantage in week one. So I am taking the Hawks. All right, we got a couple more left. We are going to Trumbull on the road at Notre Dame West Haven. Two years ago, Trumbull in the state finals. North Haven, uh, Notre Dame West Haven, a state finalist. Trumbull coming off a four and six down year. A lot of replacing to do, including Rowan Johnston, who is now at UNH. On the other side for Notre Dame, a lot of that inexperience last year is now experience, right? So I'll go first in this one. Ooh, I'm going to – it pains me to say it because they're my hometown team, but I'm taking Notre Dame West Haven in this game. I like the experience. A lot of these guys played last year on a 2-8 and eight team. Um, they're going to be hungry. Trumbull's got a lot of new faces, a lot of familiar last names, Will Carley and West Dayton. Both of their older brothers played uh, only a few years ago on Trumbull, the team that went to the semifinals. But just think it's going to be a slow start for Trumbull this year. Sean, who do you got? Yeah, I'm going to go with Notre Dame too. I think they had their, uh, you know, they had they took their lumps last year. They got a lot of guys playing. You know, now it's you know they're coming off the championship high from a year ago, two years ago. Now uh, everyone kind of got a little taste of what uh, what's to come in the season ahead. Uh, I just think they're going to be a little bit more game ready this time at home. Uh, Trumbull's similar spot. You know, they, they had a lot of things to work out last year. They have some guys to replace, though, some new stars they're going to need. I mean, I, I think it's going to be a really tough, close game, 18-13 or something like along those lines. Uh, but I'm going to go with the Green Knights. Sorry, All Joe. All right. <laughs> we got two more. This is a rematch of the double M semifinal. Wilton on the road at Massick. And guess what? This is where the game was played last year, but Wilton won 35-10. to 10. Now, that Wilton team, whether or not they get a locker room or not, everyone remembers that from last year, right? But Wilton, a lot of new faces. I keep saying it, but it is so true. A lot of guys graduated. Um, but Joey Haggerty is back, the quarterback who played so well in that semifinal game. Um, they get massive. Look, Steve Christie is back. If you've been paying attention and following along on the show on our website, you know, we don't need to rehash everything that happened last year, but Steve Christie is back. This will be, I believe, his last season coaching. Massick, this is the group that he came in with, and they are so senior heavy. Nick Fox, Gavin Walker, Shane Walker. I mean, go down the list. Look at our preview. So many seniors on this team. Um, Sean, who do you like in this one? Pete, I'm going with Massick. The triumphant return of Steve Christie in his final season head coach. You know, um, based on everything that I know about the Massick situation from last year, you know, love her, love him or hate him, you know, Steve is a, Steve's a character. And Steve coaches the, the game his own way. And some people just didn't like that. That's the way it seemed like uh, to me. I don't think there was anything nefarious going on. Just a lot of people in town just didn't like Steve. So he worked it out where he gets one year with his group and then he rides off in the sunset. Will be a championship season. I don't know. I mean, losing uh, Jason Champagne last year is tough, but they got his younger brother now there playing quarterback. He's a sophomore. Got a lot of experience playing uh, as a as a freshman. And then you mentioned all the guys on, on the defense side. That defense is self the could describe best in the state after holding Matt Jeffrey and, the, and uh, Cheshire down. And then they kind of got shown the... Uh, shown the door by Wilton. Now a little payback is in order here. Listen, it's not the same Wilton team, so you're not going to be, you know, it's not going to be the same. You still lost last year, no matter what you guys do here. But at least a little help, a little catapult into the season, really kind of a nice way to, to start, you know, put those ghosts into the closet and slam the door and lock it. 
and throw away the key. And you can move on with the season after you take care of Wilton. I'm going to take Matic. I think they're going to be excellent this year. Lots of competition in the SWC, but I think the uh, the uh, Panthers get off on the right foot. Yeah, I'm going to go with Masic here as well. Uh, I think this is a prime spot for Masic to prove that they have the best defense in the state. Just don't allow 50 to Bloomfield, okay? But I like Fox, the Walkers. Like, there's just so much talent on this Masic team that I do think that there is a state title in the future of this group. Uh, so I'm going to go with Masic as well. All right, final game of the week. It's a Saturday game. We got Newtown on the road at Stanford. Stanford made the playoffs for the first time in a very long time last year, getting yeah, to the playoffs double system. L playoffs. And they got and they played Greenwich, who beat them 47 21. But there are guys back from that team, Elijah Presley, our guy, Elijah Harris at DB, who we like a lot with second team All State for us, third team All State for us. I apologize. Uh, but Donnie did such a great job in year two there. They get Newtown, who's bringing in. Some skill players. Jaden Taylor is one of the best wide receivers in the state. He was third team all state for us. James Hardigan put on a great show last year on the opposite side. Gotta find the guys who can throw the ball to him. Gotta move the ball through the, on the ground without JJ Haddock there. Um, but I like Newtown a lot this year. I'm gonna go first in this game. And I'm gonna pick the Nighthawks. I really do think their skill players are really good and they're gonna be good enough to run with Stanford and win this game. Sean, who do you like? Yeah, I'm going to have to go with the, uh, the Nighthawks, too. I mean, Taylor's great, uh, and they always have some dudes there. They're a very disciplined team. They were pretty good last year as well. Um, and, you know, I, I don't want to say Stanford. Stanford wasn't a fluke last year. Donnie did an amazing job coaching those guys up, and they got enough guys back. Harris, you know, I thought the world of him as a, as a defensive player, we put him, uh, what, we made him third team, Pete, yeah. right? You, you said. Yeah. And, the, you know, the quarterback, you know, has, has was, was good in spots and needs to improve this year, and they all – Need to kind of figure out a way to get the get the ball moving on the ground. Listen, they were tough with Granite that time, a couple times, and uh, you were just like, oh goodness, you know what's going on here. So I think Donnie's got them in the right direction. I think starting off even at on their home field, uh, it's going to be tough against Newtown. I, I I think it'll be a relatively close game, but I like the Nighthawks to win this one. All right, well that is it for the ten games. We're going to be with you every week doing the show during i believe the regular season and then with the playoffs we kind of integrated into the meat grinder sean i like our chances this year we're going to give the eight ball one shake will pete and sean win this year 